this week on From. Yo, yo, Frommily, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Listen, I know, I know, it's been a while for some of us, hasn't it? But we are finally back. Yes, you heard it right. From is coming back very soon. And they dropped this bombshell trailer on us at the San Diego Comic Con. I'm your host, Anthony, and I'm going to do my best to deep dive and dissect all the clues in this trailer and try to help us figure out just what the F is going on around here. But first, do me a favor. If you're new here to the movie blog, please, 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 please hit that like button or just subscribe and turn on notifications. Trust me, this is going to go a long way in not just helping me, but helping you so that you can keep up with all of our weekly deep dives and analyses throughout the season as soon as the episode drops. Trust me, you do not want to miss this. But now that we're back, yo, let's do it. Let, let's get into this trailer. The trailer opens up with that familiar shot that we saw at the end of last season with Tabitha staring out the window. Now, I know I saw online more than a few of you who saw this scene and had a theory that maybe Tabitha wasn't seeing her reflection in the mirror. I think we can now say that with confidence, Tabitha returned home and returned in her own body. But if she starts speaking in tongues, then maybe we'll talk. The trailer then transitions to a scene that was also depicted in the teaser trailer. Now, a lot of us have been making theories as to who Boyd is carting through town. And I have to admit that this trailer is more misleading than a politician's promise. For starters, Boyd is wearing the same shirt from when he met Martin, who scratched him and gave him those lovely worms as a parting gift. Now, at first, I initially thought that this was all happening, you know, maybe within the same day. You know, Boyd wore that bloody shirt at the end of last season when he got shot in the shoulder and he had to shoot that dude Reggie in order to protect himself. Now, I originally had a theory that Boyd was burying Reggie after the whole incident last season. But hold on to that. E-Man and I might have cracked the case. Spoiler alert, it's not Boyd playing Weekend at Bernie's. Now, normally the seasons and the trailers open with Boyd ringing his bell in order to signal to people to go inside for the night. But this time, Boyd is carting around that body and he had Jade helping him. But real quick, did anyone else notice this dead cow on the floor? Like, we'll circle back to this, but yeah, there's a whole dead cow situation happening. As this is happening, Boyd and Donna provide some voiceover with Boyd mentioning it was an ambush and Donna replying, how many did you save? I mean... Boyd's really out here trying to save people like he's Bruce Willis in a Die Hard movie, minus the catchphrases and explosions. We then switch to Boyd's police station house with him and Donna talking and, and Boyd absolutely looks like he's still sporting the same scar that Martin gave him. You know it's bad when even your scars are plot relevant. Donna tries to console him with, you did the only thing you could do and you lost. That's Donna for you, you know, always the ray of sunshine. We then see Boyd carrying a body in the Father Katri's church, and my guy does not look happy. Last time he was in church, he had a heart-to-heart -heart with God. This time, he might be asking for a refund. We then switch to see this grown man pretending to be the child named Ethan sitting along with Boyd approaching him. It's interesting that there's no blood on Boyd's clothes, and the ground isn't covered in snow. This scene probably takes place shortly after Tabitha leaves, which explains why Ethan looks like he just found out Santa isn't real. Tabitha's gone, and he misses his mom. We also see Boyd at another point in time trying to give a pep talk to let people know that there's still hope. We then get a quick shot of Creeping Victor, but we then we also get a shot of Kenny in the diner, still packing that heat on his waist, but crying while holding flowers. Now, this is going to be one of the biggest clues as to the mystery of who was in the cart at the beginning of the trailer. So remember this moment because we're going to talk about it in a few. But this is clearly later in the season as Kenny is seen wearing a winter coat in this moment. This moment doesn't last long because Kenny decides to trash the jukebox that's been haunting us for two seasons. It's like watching someone fight with the printer at the office. It's tragic and really unnecessary. We then get a quick shot of Jade, and I could be wrong, but is my guy missing a tooth? Hmm. His beard and hair have grown out like he's auditioning for Castaway 2, Lost in From Town. We also see in this moment that Jade looks up for a moment and sees someone standing in front of him holding a skull. Now, I took some time to look closely at his clothes and it kind of reminds me of when Jade was hallucinating and seeing those old soldiers that chased him back in season one. 
This guy here seems to have a pretty gnarly eye injury and then decides to drink something from the skull he's holding. Jim and Kenny are walking through the forest looking like they're on a camping trip gone wrong. And Jim's probably looking for Tabitha. The only person who knows where she went is Victor. And if this season is anything like season two, Victor's as tight-lipped as a mob informant. We then switch to Boyd and Christy staring at the pool with the overturned car. You know, at this point, it's a from town pastime. People are looking at this car like people watching in Times Square, but it's a little bit more depressing. We saw Elgin out here last season with Julie, and now it's these two. We still don't even know whose car that is. We then see Jim again, and Jim mentions how things are getting worse, aren't they? Understatement of the year, Jim. Fatima is walking to what looks like a pile of trash. My guess is it's their crops. They've been farming like it's the Dust Bowl and Donna says, Boyd, we're out of food. Remember this because it ties into another one of my theories. Yeah, more theories than a conspiracy subreddit. Last season, Donna was stressed out because she said the plants were just not growing like they're supposed to and now it seems like they're all the way done. We then switch to see what looks like Victor walking through the forest holding a piece of paper with some trees drawn on them. And then he starts digging a hole with the voiceover of him saying, I have to try to remember what's missing. Our sanity after two seasons of this show, Victor, that's what's missing. Now, we learned last season that Victor has been through some horrible things while living in this town and went through an extended period of time in which he was the only person in town by himself. Throughout that time, either the trauma took its toll or this place had some weird effects on his long-term memory. But either way, Victor has a level of amnesia and has trouble remembering some of the things that he's witnessed. To help him, he draws things that he feels are worth remembering and sticks his drawings all over the place. His room, the back of that truck, and even stuck some drawings in the trunk of his mom's car. This makes me feel like Victor buried something in the forest that he now wants to retrieve so that he can remember something he forgot. I don't know why he maybe would have done this, but it is certainly possible that's what he's digging up. Tabitha back in the real world in a confession booth speaking to a priest. She's trying to make sense of everything and the priest is probably wishing he called in sick. We didn't see Tabitha meeting up with the new series edition Robert Joy from CSI New York. We don't know much about his character, but I was told that his character's name is Henry, and the description that I was given is that he's a curmudgeon to whom the years have not been kind. That's, that's just a fancy word for grumpy old man. Think bad Santa, but with less holiday cheer and more existential dread. What's interesting is that Tabitha is meeting with this guy, and my guy has a tree with a bottle with the bottles hanging from it. He got the tree with the bottles hanging from it. This is like the third tree we've seen like this in this series. The most recent time we've seen a tree like this was the faraway tree that Victor took Tabitha to that brought her to the lighthouse. The other time we've seen a tree like this was when Boyd and Sarah went out into the forest together and came across a tree like this right before Boyd got swarmed by a bunch of spiders. I'm curious about who Henry is and how he plays into this story. Has he been to From Town before? He even ends up telling Tabitha that he thinks she's here for what he has in the basement. And we get there and we see a bunch of paintings. I'm the Ankuli kids. The Ankuli kids? Who the hell painted those? Ooh. And what in the hell is that thing in the back with the white mane and the white on the wrist? Is that a painting of a pilgrim? Yo, I don't know what the heck is going on. But then again, neither does Tabitha. And my guess is that she's trying desperately to find someone who may be able to help her from the other side. We then switch back to Jim and Kenny making their way through the forest and they come across this weird thing here which kind of looks like a skeleton with a crown of thorns on its head. This skeleton is more disturbing than a tax audit but if you look even closer you can see that the thorns are actually all over this thing's body. And speaking of this thing, what is this thing? That ain't human. This is not human at all. There's no mouth. There's an eye missing. Kind of looks like that guy Jade saw and this thing ain't got no ribs. It's almost like someone killed a human, stripped off all the flesh, and then tried to put the skeleton back together like a puzzle with no picture to reference. But who did this? And why does this skull have a massive gash in the face? Like someone shoved a broadsword through right, right through the person's eye socket. 
Now, Eman and I have a theory about this too, and you can catch that theory in our video reaction and breakdown that we posted on both our channels. Think of it as DLC for this breakdown. I'll have a link to both our videos in the comments and in the description. We then finally see Boyd walking through town while ringing his bell and ooh, it's starting to look cold outside. We then switch to see the people creature mon- Whoa! The people creature monsters, man! It's been so long. I almost missed them. Like a bad ex. Wow. Look, it even seems like we might even have a new one. I don't remember this guy looking like a creepy Bluto and this other lady who makes me worry if I forgot to return my library book. But what's interesting is that things seem to light up right in front of them. Like things get noticeably brighter as if something just blew up or someone is shining a really bright light at them. We also see a quick moment of Mrs. Luke looking shook it. And it looks like she's outside that bar gas station at the beginning of town. Ooh. I don't like the looks of this one bit. Now we see a bit further what happened to the cow. Yeah, it's, it's not just done. It's throat ripped out done. The milkman was not having it. Victor saved Jade from joining the cow in the afterlife. Boy tries another not Captain America speech and uh, let's just say it's less Avengers Assemble and more good luck. Now the absolute wildest part is when we see this grown man Ethan open the freaking door at night. He opened the door for the grandma monster. They could have get it back shut. Like what? What were you thinking? We didn't see Julie and Ethan run for their lives. And I don't know what's going to happen to them, but I think it's happening the same night as earlier when the cow got got. We didn't quickly see the boy in white looking like he's waving goodbye, right? That's a goodbye wave, right? And we see him with young Victor who's still covered in blood. This moment feels like it takes place shortly after Victor came out of the cave the night his mom and sister disappeared as we clearly see that there's still bodies sprawled out all over town in the background. We then get a quick shot of Ellis and Fatima and... Mm, Fatima's mouth is bleeding. That's never a good sign unless you're auditioning for a vampire movie. We then switch to Donna and... Ooh, man. Donna's broken. We then get a quick shot of Elgin so we know he's back. We then get a quick shot of the marionette dummy thingy that Jade sometimes sees when he's high. He's back too and this time he's got the people's eyebrow. We then see Jade laying down in the bar looking up at some strings he put together and it kind of looks like he's trying to recreate the symbol he saw when he was in the Ankui cave. We see his sketchbook and some strong out joint papers and it feels like my guy has his thinking cap on. We also see Boyd is still trying to inspire Hope. Uh, then we see Julie is trying to hide and seems to find help from Sarah. We then switch to see someone gets got in the ribs when they open the door at Colony House and we see this poor woman in agony. I have no idea who this woman is but I wouldn't be surprised if this is just one of the randoms that we often see just doing random stuff in the background. Then we see Jim and he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders because not only is he lost and can't go home but now his wife is missing too. And then the friggin phone rings. Last time we saw the phone ring was with Kenny, but I wonder if this is instead more like when Jim was making contact with people with the radio. I'm wondering if they're reaching out to him again. What's really interesting is that we see more of those homemade Barbie dolls and my goosenips, one of them is Pinhead. That is Pinhead. Someone put three of these things right outside of town and one of them is Pinhead. But this scene feels like it's a lot later in the season because at this point there's a ton of snow on the ground. Now again, me and He-Man have a theory on this, so I don't definitely would encourage you guys to watch our live reaction on this, where we go in depth on the theory of what these things are and what they mean to the bigger story. We didn't switch to what looks like the folks in town gathered in the church for a funeral, and then we see Ethan seemingly walking up to the front. My first guess is that they're holding a funeral for Tabitha, because, you know, she's missing. I think they would probably assume Tabitha is no longer alive because it's been so long. But it could also be that person that Boyd was wheeling in the town earlier in the trailer. We then get a quick shot of Jade standing by a really red rock, like a oh, really red rock. Now another big clue as to who it was being wheeled into the town happens very, very quickly, like blinking you miss it quickly when we see Boyd in a similar situation that we saw him in during the teaser trailer from back in April. In that trailer, we saw Boyd was being restrained by the monsters while being forced to watch something that he seems horrified to watch. It's in this scene that we see Boyd get a fresh scratch on his arm by the monsters 
And if this is in fact that same scene, then my theory is that the person getting wheel carted around at the beginning of the trailer is the person who got got in this scene. We then see a quick shot of Tabitha seemingly in a parking lot. I'm guessing this is shortly after she gets discharged from the hospital. We then see someone stepping into a bear trap. Mm, damn. I don't know who this is, but I gotta admit, I think that's a woman. I think. It could also be Kenny or Jim. We'll see. We see Randall tweaking in the streets off of opioids. Uh, we then see a quick shot of Christy in the diner. Welcome back, Christy. Uh, we then get a quick shot of another addition to the cast when we see Samantha Brown. And you guys might know her from Why the Last Man. Samantha is a new addition to season three. And I was told that her character is named Acosta. And she's a new to the force police officer who's in over her head. And it looks like she's in way over her head because it looks like someone was with her but got got by the people creature monsters. We also get a quick shot of Fatima pulling out a tooth. Let's hope it's just a wisdom tooth and not a bad omen. We also get another shot of Julie. We also get more Jade. Ew, and he's getting hemmed up by his hallucination. Must be a Tuesday. Ethan gets grabbed. Looks like the same night as the cow incident. It's, it's a bad night all around. We didn't see a shot of Daryl outside at night in front of Father Cotri's house about to get got by the monsters. Now this EMS truck here looks newer than the old one that Christy used to use to scavenge for supplies. So my guess is that Daryl and possibly others came out here to try to help some new arrivals in town. And it looks like at least one of them got got in this scene too. But yeah, this is definitely a new EMT truck because we see this one has a working computer inside. And we also see that the people monsters has the keys to the car. Yikes. And this monster taunts Boyd by telling him, you can't save them all. And am I the only one noticing that these things are just not taking Boyd out? Like, they're just straight up having conversations with my guy. And then we see that the new season is arriving a lot sooner than we thought. And we will be premiering on September 22nd on MGM+. And wow, what a trailer. Now, there's a lot that we went over in this trailer and a lot more that I'm sure we'll unpack in the lead up to the season premiere. Now, for all of you patient people who stuck around for my theory on who's in the wheelbarrow at the beginning of the trailer, drum roll, please. I think it's Christy. Here's why. The white shoe. The sad Kenny. And let's face it, TV shows hate having duplicate characters. Boyd's reaction in this teaser suggests it's someone close. Christy fits the bill. The first clue we see is when we see the wheelbarrow, we notice that one of the feet has that white shoe. Now stay with me. There's a white shoe on the foot of this person in the wheelbarrow. The next clue we get in this trailer is earlier when we see Christy and Boyd standing by the pool. If you look really closely, Christy's shoes are white. Not enough clues for you? All right, let's go a little bit further. Remember when we saw Kenny in the diner looking sad? I mean, sure, we don't see Mrs. Lou could also be a casualty of the ambush, but I still think it's Christy. I mean, think about it. TV shows usually just don't allow you to have two of the same kind of character. Christy was the town doctor, but now Marielle is here and she's also a doctor. Either way, the show is giving us two of the same types of characters, and that's one too many. Anyway, that's all I have for this one. Look, if you're new here to the movie blog, do me a big, big favor. Please, again, hit that like button. Please hit that like button. Please, please hit that like button. It don't cost you nothing. It'll make sure you stay in touch, and it'll help me grow. Please hit that like button before you go. Subscribe. Turn on notifications. Otherwise, I'm going to have to check you all later. Peace.